Well, it's another Saturday in the workshop, and I'm hoping to get this bike running this weekend. Uh, if you've missed the last couple of episodes, uh, what I'm working on is building a bike to run in the Bonneville Motorcycle Speed Trials out at uh, the Bonneville Salt Flats. And uh, so this is a 1974 Honda CB200. It's nothing too crazy. I'm mostly going out just to have a good time, and if I happen to set a record, even better. Uh, so today what I'm going to work on is uh, get all the electrical working on this and hopefully get the bike running. Uh, so I've been working on it a little bit in the evenings this week. Uh, so what I've done is I've been doing some changes on the handlebars. Uh, first of all, uh, I got rid of the original, uh, <laughs> I say start switch, but it's not actually a start switch. Uh, so when I bought the bike, it, you know, it's an old bike, it's been through several owners and modified and whatnot, and it doesn't actually have a starter button. It's an electric start bike, but there's no starter button on it. I, you know, obviously some parts have been changed with the kickstart bike. Uh, so way, the way it was set up when I got it is uh, on the throttle side of the handlebars, up on top where you would normally have the kill switch, that was how you turn the starter on. It's a toggle switch. You flip it on, the starter turns, and you just need to make sure you shut it off when the bike starts. Uh, and it didn't actually have a kill switch. You had to use the key. So that, uh, that won't work for what I need to do in Bonneville. Uh, so I decided I'd just replace that with a normal, uh, just a new switch. I bought just a cheap one. It's got an on-off switch and a starter button. Um, however, since this is all one unit, uh, it's you know the uh, base of the throttle, the uh, on-off switch, and the front brake mount, I uh, meant uh, I had to take all of that off. Um, however, I don't actually need a front brake. And when you're on the salt with minimal traction, uh, you don't necessarily want to use the front brake. You're only required to have the rear. So that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, you've, got, you've got a mile or two of coasting to, to slow down. And even past that, you're not really going to hit anything. So I'm certainly uh, fine without a front brake. So I've uh, replaced that, I, and I had to buy a separate throttle because the throttle was part of that as well. So I got all of that mounted, and that seems to be working well. On the left-hand side of the handlebars, I'm going to do something similar. It's uh, just like on the right-hand side. It's all one unit. The uh, clutch uh, lever mounts into the same thing that has the switches for the turn signals and the lights, which obviously I don't have or need on this. So I'm going to be pulling that off and um, I have just a normal uh, clutch lever that I'm going to put in its place. Uh, also, for now, I'm going to mock things up with these handlebars, but I have decided I want to go with clip-on handlebars. It'll allow me to get into more of a tuck position. Uh, I don't have those yet. They've been ordered. Should be here in a week or so. Uh, but in the meantime, I can get things set up uh, with these handlebars. So the other thing I've been working on in the evenings is uh, making sure all my wires are labeled and uh, put all my uh, connectors on that I want. Uh, so what I've got on here are, I, I have just a simple label printer on my computer and you can get heat shrink tube that's, uh, that you can print on with those. It's just a car normal cartridge like the printer normally takes, but you can buy those with heat shrink tubing in it, which is really useful for doing wiring. So you can put, um, you know, labels on there so you know where everything goes, especially if, you know, when you're building your own wiring harness, you may not have enough different colors of wire. And so, you know, it's like, which red wire is this? It's uh, nice to have labels. Also, I'm a little bit colorblind. Sometimes I have trouble. I've got just basic colors, which I can tell pretty easily on this. But on anything more complex, labeling those wires is really useful. Uh, so I've got these wires with connectors on it, and I've built up a basic wiring harness. And uh, so uh, I'm going to try to get things just loosely hooked up, not necessarily tucked into place, just to test things out. So the way, uh, the, the other requirement you have for, uh, for Bonneville is you are required to have an emergency kill switch. So this is a, a lanyard kill switch you can clip onto your body. And, you know, when the clip is in place, the bike will run, you know, and then if you come off the bike, you know, obviously you don't want the bike running full throttle uh, with nobody on it. So this will kill it as soon as, uh, you know, hopefully I don't need it, but if I fall off the bike, it'll stop. So I've tested things out with the multimeter, but just individually, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and hook everything up. And uh, at least I may not hook it to the starter, but I'll at least hook up my starter relay, make sure I hear a click on the start and make sure I've got power everywhere I should. 
So initial test is looking pretty good. I've got things just loosely laid out, uh, but connected where they're gonna be. And so, like I said, there's really not a lot to power. It's gotta power the coil, the uh, solenoid switch for the fuel, and uh, the starter. So first of all, I'm not sure if you can hear this, but first test is just listening for the click. Uh, the bike's off now, but when we turn it on, we should hear a click from the uh, fuel solenoid. Don't know if you heard that, but there's a definite click. Uh, the other thing is, turn that, uh, actually turn it on again here. I have just my starter relay wired up, which once again, we should hear a click with the switch on if I hit the starter. And there's a definite click there, so my starter should work. Um, also with the switch off, the starter should do nothing. That's good. And the one thing I don't actually have wired into the bike yet is uh, the power to the coil for the ignition. So uh, we'll just use the multimeter. So with the switch off, of course we get nothing and I turn it on, we hear the beep. So everything should be good. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna try to tidy this up. Neat and tidy wiring will save you massive amounts of headaches. Um, like one thing you'll note, every connector, I don't tend to use the heat shrink connectors. I tend to use the regular connectors, but I always put heat shrink tubing uh, over the edge of the connectors. And also I try to use the heat shrink that has the adhesive. So not only do you have the crimp holding the uh, connector on, but you have the uh, heat shrink with adhesive just reduces the chance of that getting pulled loose. Uh, you know, loose connections can, you know, cause all kinds of hassles. Uh, and the other thing I'm gonna do is I have a spool of this. Uh, it's just split loom wiring. Uh, it's just a, a tube that's uh, spirally split. You can wrap around this, pull all the wires together so that uh, they're not going everywhere. They're not gonna snag on stuff. Neat and tidy is my goal. Uh, so I'm gonna do this and then I'll actually hook up the starter probably. Well, actually what I need to do before that is you'll note my battery is just sitting here on the uh, rear fender right now. Uh, I didn't like how the battery was mounted in this before. It's another thing that had been you know, modified by a previous owner. Uh, so I'm gonna bend up a piece of sheet metal to make a battery box uh, here under the seat. So uh, yeah, actually that'll probably be, the, I'm gonna tidy up the wiring, build that battery box and find a good way to securely mount that battery. Well, through the magic of editing, it is day two. Uh, I decided to shut the cameras off yesterday and just get some stuff done. Uh, so made some pretty good progress. Uh, you'll note that, uh, uh, first of all, the handlebars are removed. I decided uh, I was gonna mock things up on, on those handlebars before I got my new ones, but I figured I'd just get them out of the way now. Uh, I also removed the wiring from these gauges because uh, I don't need any of the lights. They're, they're not hooked to anything anyway. So getting those wires out of the way I definitely clean things up and right here you can see I've mounted my emergency kill switch that's actually why I had to pull the handlebars off is to have easy access to this and I've uh, made a new battery box uh, to hold the battery I, it really just had a, a bit of a tray there was no hold down before I wasn't too uh, I mean it was fine for street use but I'm sure they would have complained about it in the in the tech inspection so I've got the battery in there securely mounted all my wires are run into here, tied up nice and neatly. So, you know, the battery box, it's, it's kind of, it's not the neatest job, but, you know, typical uh, fashion. I made a uh, cardboard template of it, found something that, that fit my battery nicely. Uh, and it's a little bent up. I kind of hammered it into shape, but it's functional. Uh, so all my wiring is now hooked up. Uh, I went ahead and hooked all the plumbing up, and this is actually the first I've put fuel in the tank. I, I put a little water in it to check it before. Uh, so I you know, very carefully put some fuel in there and uh, there's been no drips and uh, everything seems to be fine. And so I could pretend that uh, I'm doing this big reveal and it's never been started before, but I actually did run it earlier. Uh, there is one, one mistake, one little screw up I do need to show you. So I discovered once I had everything in place here that this lever for the choke, it's got, the, the lever has plenty of room, but there's uh, this other part of the lever that the linkage goes to the second carb so that when you lift this, both chokes come on. That hits my fuel line. Uh, that's something I 
didn't realize when, when I uh, had this bolted up before, I actually just had the carburetor loosely on because I had been pulling it off to work on it. And turns out with the carburetor bolted in place, that's in the way. Also, I had to kind of change where my filter was and I'm going to have to redo this and make this line a little bit shorter. I was going to go around this way, uh, but if I do that, there, there's really no way to do that without kinking the hose right in here. Uh, so I'm going to shorten it. It's, the filter will come down right here and then make a gentle turn into that. Um, I also had to make these lines a little longer. And for now, I just left them extra long um, just because they were too short before. And I figure I can cut them down later on. Uh, but it's good enough to try running the bike and uh, you know make sure everything's functional. So it's a little hard to start since I can't, uh, I can't use the choke on the left carb. I'm gonna, I can modify that a little bit and I'll, I'll have that working. So I only have choke on one carb because with the linkage disconnected, I can uh, choke this one a little bit. And of course, it's a little hard to run the throttle without it being connected, but let's see if we can make this run. Give it just a little bit of throttle. Fires right up. So I think that works pretty well. I'm pretty happy that uh, you know all my electrical is working fine. Now I don't have any charging circuit. It's just the battery. Uh, I am going to try to uh, wire that up. Uh, but worst case scenario, I can I can put this battery on a charger, the Shorei battery. You, you don't these is a lithium iron battery, which you don't really want to let them run all the way down. But basically, it'll just need to be able to start it a couple times and run a couple miles. Uh, so I think I can come back to the pits and recharge that uh, after every run and be fine. Rather not, I'd rather have it charging. But uh, you know, I got to get more important stuff done first. So I think that pretty much wraps it up for this weekend. I uh, certainly have a lot more to work on. I still need to get my new tires on. I want to do brand new tires and tubes. Uh, nothing wrong with these tires, but I don't know how old they are, so I don't really want to trust them. And uh, I have a, another set of sprockets that'll gear it a little bit faster, which will be good. And I've got a few different ones I can swap out when I'm out there on the salts just to, to tune it in. But uh, hopefully we're getting pretty close.